Hello, Facebook Live crowd, everyone. Welcome. This is Dr. Bill Bird at CGH Medical Center. And we have a special uh, Facebook Live episode for you today. I, I have Bob Lehman with me here. Hi, Bob. How are you, Doc? I'm doing well. Bob's the uh, director of our maintenance department here at the hospital. And we are going to kind of do a a modified this old house, aren't we? We are. We're going to walk through and take a look at the construction that's going on here at the hospital um, for our new inpatient behavioral health unit. So first time, I'm sure there'll be a few, a few little clunky things, but we'll work through it. We will. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think what I'd like to do Oh, and by the way, thank you, thank you to Erica Adams for my uh, pink mask. She works. She was on here a few episodes ago, and she works in the mammography department. And uh, once again, for Women's Health Month, I'm wearing pink as much as I can this month. So, just want to bring that out to everyone's attention. And I know that that virtual designs, uh, delicious designs thing is going on to the foundation here. Pretty. Is it started yet, Dana? Next week. Next week it starts. So keep that in mind. Okay. Let's start, let's start our tour. Come on, everybody, join us. And it's going to be a little bit bouncy as we go through here. Oh, I want to get that door there for Dana. Okay. And what I want to do, actually, is I want to talk to some of, uh, some of the folks that are working here and doing this work. And, hey, Eric. <laughs> Hi Eric, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good. So I'm gonna get a little bit. I'm gonna get this microphone like this. And let me know if we're having any issues. So, um, oh, <laughs> I grabbed my name badge. Okay, let me try that again. Okay, here is the what I'm after. The microphone. So Eric um, is um, one of the folks working here on the project. Um, and by the way, if you wanna, if you're big into bass fishing or electric guitars, this is your guy as well. So, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Yes. All right. So, Eric, uh, tell me, what, what's your role here? Uh, well, I'm a carpenter here. Um, our job is to build pretty much everything, walls, sheetrock, paint, yeah. mud, the whole nine yards. That's, that's my job. Did so. you start out at CGH as a carpenter, or did you come here from having been elsewhere? Well, I had, I had worked with my dad for years. My dad had his own business as okay. a drywaller, and um, okay. so as a kid, we grew up learning how to do that. But when I started here, I was a general maintenance technician, and through working with uh, Phil Todd, our previous carpenter, uh, eventually Bob promoted me to take his position when he left, and that's how I ended up doing what I'm doing. So I kind of ended up right back yeah. where I was doing with my dad. So good, good. it worked out good for me. So how's working in a hospital as a carpenter different, or is it different than being a, a carpenter out doing residential stuff? It's, it's definitely different than residential. I mean, there's a lot more codes to look into. You got patients. Um, uh, you can't just let dust just fly anywhere. That's a huge difference, you know. Um, yeah. Also, you use a lot of metal studs that, that are around here. We stand rock up in here instead of laying it down. We have a lot of suspended ceilings that you don't have in houses, so it's, it's definitely different. Uh, our other carpenter, Eddie, back there, when he came in here, that was the first thing he found out was it's yeah. a little different. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. there yeah. is a difference, but... Okay. So... Good, good. Well, hey, thanks, and no uh, appreciate your time. Yeah. And where are the fish biting right now? Uh, pool 13, Mississippi River. There you go. <laughs> yeah. All right. For sure. Good chatting with you, <laughs> yep. Eric. All right. All right. All right. Okay, we're going to keep going on here. And So, Bob, I, I think the thing... I don't know if Dana can do this. I probably should have asked Dana. If you look up above us... There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of stuff going on. Tight ceiling, very, a lot of stuff going on. The, the amount of, um, and we get down in here, come on this way with us a little bit too. The, the amount of wiring that is in a hospital is really interesting. So like, what is all that stuff for, Bob? Blue cables are for data that, that Tim had ran. Uh, so the electricians run that, Tim is running the low voltage. Yeah. And the yellow cables are also part of the infrastructure for low voltage uh, systems for like the uh, access control. Okay. So Good. primarily. Good. All right. Yeah. Red wire is a fire alarm. Got it. Hey, should, let's go, we're going to go into a room just to kind of take a look at like one of these rooms, what they look like. Which, which where should we go here, Bob? So you want to go to a patient room? Yeah, a patient room. Let's, let's go down yeah. here. Yeah. 
We're supposed to walk slowly, but we're not so good at that. Yeah, no. <laughs> that was not my Dana can only go so fast without it kind of starting to vibrate a little bit here. I'm going this room. Okay. So this will be a semi-private room. Okay. And so while we're talking, um, so how many rooms are going to be private versus semi-private, Bob? There will be uh, six uh, private or no, semi-private rooms and two private. Okay. And I think we'll be able to have 10 patients here um, once it's fully operational, Correct. right? Correct. Okay. Come on in. And hey, I, for, I, I was going to ask you this too. When, when, is it, when will you think it might be done? We're hoping to be done with construction uh, shortly after the first of the year. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good to know. And then, like in terms of um, the uh, the folks that inspect it, how long after that does it typically take to get occupancy? Well, it could take anywhere from fifteen to forty-five days. Uh, okay. So you're looking at you know potentially maybe a couple months. Okay. It's done. Okay. You got to send your paperwork in to them. Okay. And then once they deem all your paperwork been complete. They'll start that time clock of 45 days to review your yeah. paperwork. And then once they've said that your paperwork is complete, they have 15 days to... to so we're probably back. talking March or so we're probably before talking really March having this up and, up and running and going, going strong. Okay. Yeah. So what's unique about this room, Bob, versus a typical patient room that you guys would put together? Well, when you look at this room here, you see the ceiling right out of the box is different. Uh, this has a, a hard cap ceiling, so it's drywall ceiling. So the studs that are put up there to hold the system in place are just much heavier. So the system is, itself is just heavier. The, all the sheetrock in here is, uh, has an impact resistant sheetrock. Okay. So it's, it's, that sheetrock alone is just heavier in, uh, in volume when you look at it. So it has like a mesh in between of it. And there again, it's just to keep anything from them banging into the wall. So you can't hit against into... that wall and, no. and cause a lot of damage? Right. Okay. All right. The other thing that's up here that's unique up in these rooms, uh, in all the rooms actually, is that the walls behind the sheetrock have uh, the, the, the three-quarter inch plywood behind there. They're again trying to re keep patients from busting through the wall. Okay. Uh, they're again just more impact resistance, so everything about this room. Okay. Windows as they come into the room, these windows are not the windows that will be here. They're the existing windows. Okay. They stay. But on the interior part of the window, they become kind of like a storm window. Okay. But what they get, they'll get a Lexon uh, poly uh, carbon material there. That's really impact resistant. So that's, again, everything's being built to be impact resistant as much as ligature, much as ligature resistance as well. Yeah. So the features when that you, you when see When you say here, ligature, that's someone trying to like strangle themselves. That's, that's ligature that we have it, to be careful of in this mental health it is, and so the, everything in here has ligature resistance uh, qualities to it. Everything from the type of diffusers that you're using for the airflow to come out of the ceilings, okay. they have a smaller uh, uh, hole in them, so you can't get anything passed through them the way the holes are designed. The lighting uh, is also has uh, the special lighting has a cover over the lights themselves, so you can't get up inside of them and, and, and hang anything around anything to, to pull yourself or hang yourself down with or yeah. pull them out. Yeah. Uh, fixtures in the to uh, bathroom. Uh, let's, are go, let's take a look at the bathroom here. Oh, we have somebody in the bathroom. How about that? Okay. Hey, Kirk. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. So here, show us the bathroom, Bob. I'll step away for a sec. Okay, the bathroom. Like I said, it, what you have here, you have an access panel here. I will. I will. You have an access panel here that will get put in that covers all the plumbing that for the toilet and stuff. So you have nothing exposed out here of the toilet. So that's which is different than we have in the hospital everywhere else. Right, right. The, the sinks and things will have uh, covers over the pipes that come up underneath. Yeah. So there again, nothing there to hang yourself from. Okay. So they're, that's, they're again, it's different than we have in the hospital or everywhere yeah. else. Yeah. All the way down to the floor drain that's in here across the, the opening of the shower. Yeah, take a look at, there we go. The shower will have a, this is a, the, the floor drain is embedded in, uh, into the concrete right now, and it, has, it gets a cover put over the top of this, but that cover has holes that are small enough that you can't pass anything through. Okay. It also has the, the way the...
thing I was going to ask, as I kind of all the specialists that I run across, tell me what, it t what do you have to do to become an electrician? What's that process? Um, I took classes at SOC for it okay. um, as, lo as long as, as far as um, on the job experience too. My uncle's an electrician, so okay. I started working for him for years and all right. kind of learned that way and then got sure. my electrical license. So is it two years of, of community college? Yeah, it's just, you go, you know, I took night classes and stuff, okay. so, okay. you know, and then there's a degree they have out there that you can get. And, All right, All right. Uh, I'm just asking for folks who might be interested, and so how long is the, like, the apprenticeship process? Um, it's not a specific time. Yep, no Good problem. work, man. Anytime. Good Thank work. You. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. All right. We're going to keep going here. Hi, hey, Tim. Tim's our, Tim's our roving Wi-Fi guy here today. Yeah, the <laughs> Tim's also, a, aren't you a ham operator? Yeah. I thought so, yeah. So if anyone could handle that kind of stuff, it's Tim. All right. What, where's the plumber at? Do you have a plumber on it? Oh, I got Tim up here. What's that? I got Timmy up here. Okay, well, let's grab Tim. I'm trying to make sure I get other, all the folks that do different things. Oh, hey, Tim. Go. Who's Tim? He walked out. Oh, shame on him. Yeah, he walked out. <laughs> okay. So anything else that you, that you would show us design-wise, Bob, that we should kind of be aware of? When we first came in, the, the other thing that's different from this unit that's going to be from every other unit, in between where you see this opening with the door frames at and yeah. the wall behind there, that's called a sally port. So what you'll do is you'll come into this the door that yeah. that's not there right now. You'll come through there. You have to be buzzed in by the by the uh, by the nursing staff. You'll come in. They'll have, they'll be able to see you on video. Okay. You have to be buzzed in again, and neither the, neither one of those doors can be open at the same time. Okay. So it's kind of like a security thing. So basically, the patient cannot get out. Okay. Uh, so if you're coming in, they can't just rush out behind you. Okay. And if they get out to this unit or out of this area here. Yeah. They're between the sally port, okay. so they can't get any further than there. All right. So they'll get, this is a safety feature for not only staff, but for the patient as well. Okay. It doesn't let them out into the hospital where they can cause harm to right. themselves or others. Right, right. So, yeah, so that's something else. That's, that's probably one of the big design them. things that we'll see. It is. Okay. It really is. Anything else that, would, that folks be, might be interested in in terms of design outside of the rooms? Well, they're, they're, they're putting in just a lot of different systems. I mean, it's different from the hospital. I mean, in the hospital, you have nurse call systems, you know, that have the cords and TVs. Yeah. No TVs. Oh, okay. So, so no TVs in the, in the patient rooms. You'll have one TV on the floor. It's, it's in their day room. Okay. So it's their activity room slash day okay. room. Okay. All right. So that's the other thing that would be different about this unit than uh, every other unit. Where's the so day? Is this the day? This, this, this is the day room right here. Okay, so let's. I want to take a look at this day room here. Oh, okay. Hey, Steve. Hey. <laughs> How are you today? Good. I, 
Well, you can stay right there, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Look at mixing. You're mixing a little bit of uh, something to put on the drywall. I take it. Yes, I'm throwing some spots at the drywall. Okay. To get ready to start finishing walls. Nice. And move project along. He's a project mover. Steve is. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. Yes, I'm, he is. I'm just a drywaller. Uh, <laughs> did you do that? Is that like when you, before you came to the hospital, is that what you did for a living? You no, know, it's kind of a family business. My dad was a drywaller, and I grew up around it. I, I worked tool and die for like 25 years. Oh, uh, okay. And then uh, I just grew up around it from when I was little. Uh, you're from Milledgeville, right? Yes. Okay, because I, I could have sworn there was a big drywall service around Milledgeville. Is that your family? There, there are a couple of them up there, but no, they're not. Okay. They're, they're, I'm not related to them. Okay. But he started years ago, and that's how I kind of picked the trade up. And yeah. Construction, been around it ever since I was little, so. Yeah. Um, enjoy it. I like working my hands. I like seeing busy. Yeah. It's yeah. a perfect fit for me. I hear you. Yeah. Yeah, Steve, I'm, we're glad to have Steve here and doing his thing. Um, he looks good, doesn't he? Yeah. I feel good. I'm doing good. All right. All right. So, um, yeah. And then in terms of putting the drywall for this, anything? I know that the drywall is a little different, but is there anything different about when you when you put the seals on the drywall and that kind of stuff for this? Uh, they said no, uh, other than going clear up to the cement deck, which we normally don't do residential. Okay. Um, the finishes are going to be the same as far as I've seen. I haven't heard anything different. The, okay. the coating and everything's the same. Okay. Good. Pretty straightforward. We're gonna start making some headway here in the next week, ten days. So yeah, yeah, there'll be big changes up here in the next month or so. Okay. I mean, we'll start putting, we'll start painting, start getting the finishes put yeah. on. Yeah. So I think in another month, you know, this thing will look totally different. Yeah. Uh, which is what we're striving for. I think you know we're all tired of uh, putting the drywall and wood and everything else up. It's time to start putting the finishing touches on. Sure. And moving forward. Sure. And Steve is just you know, is one of uh, the four carpenters that we have. Okay. Um, so you got so Steve, and we met Eric. We have Eric. We have Tom and Eddie. They're at the uh, oh, okay. south end. Okay. So you yeah, see yeah. them if you go down that way. We have uh, two plumbers right now. Jason's off um, hurt uh, right now. But uh, we have uh, Adam that just joined us. Uh, they're again with uh, okay. just a ton of experience from the outside world, coming from the outside world as a licensed plumber. Tim Shoemaker, who is my uh, supervisor, also is a licensed plumber by trade. Oh, that's right. Okay. So, so, I get, so I gain that benefit of having him be a licensed sure. plumber. Yeah. We have the three uh, electricians. You met uh, two, and then uh, Tim Ross is the third. But Andy is, uh, is uh, one of them that you see down the hallway here as well. So there's 27 guys in the shop okay. all together. And at some point in time, they all kind of float in up here. Okay. With the primary being the, the primary guys being the trades, yeah, uh, running the things. But as the, the real tedious work is really the kind of the hard, the work that the trades really don't want to do. But it's really the hard work yeah. is topping off these walls. Uh, is what you see these guys doing. Okay. And yeah, it, it's a team, it's a total team effort. I'm sure. I am sure. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about this room. Okay, this is the day room. That this is where they do their activities, and this will be the one room that has a TV in it. Okay. Okay, so it has its closest proximity to the, uh, which will be the nurse's station. Uh, this room and the room okay. next to it, which is the uh, uh, nurse or the uh, dining room. So these things are all kind of together. Um, okay. So folks just for kind of congregating here if they're not involved in, that, in therapy or, you know, something's right. going on. Okay, good. Yeah, probably over the years, you know, the department's probably done right around probably 10, 15 projects. Yeah. Major projects. The last major project we did was uh, two east. Uh, renovation, which is about, about $2.3 million project. Um, yeah. You know, we use the local suppliers as much as we can. Uh, we start the trades. We don't do everything ourselves. We hire out the, the flooring because it doesn't make sense to have our own flooring guy on staff. We can hire out local guys. Yeah. Um, again, we use local suppliers. We, we use Menards. We use Grommerts to buy materials from as much as we can. Yeah. Uh, so there again, I think, you know, we do a lot of blended jobs. We use with the local uh, tradesmen because not everything can be done by us because sometimes it's time driven. So we'll use like most and lotions and those things from a, a, a HVAC standpoint, or we use complete electric or Ingle Electric for electrical when we need assistance to come in sure. and help. Not that these guys can't do it, but sometimes it's just time driven. Yeah, you only have um, you only have so much bandwidth uh, to do that with, sure. right? Yeah, and, and and it works out real well for me and my trades because we're a non-union shop. So we're able to just blend and help as we need to. Uh, use it when we use with union uh, labor, 
any labor that we hire from the outside, we have to pay union prevailing wage. So it's not like it's a cost savings when we hire somebody from the outside, we're paying prevailing wage. Yeah. But what we find is using internal staff, we're able to flex and adjust. It's hard for outside contractors to come in and think they're gonna get a day's work here today. And then we have physicians saying, hey, you gotta stop because it's too noisy. So yeah. what are they supposed to do for the day? They go home. Yeah. Well, we just go back to another. You have something else already on. The, you have, you have we have other things, things we can do. do. Yeah. Right. So that, that works out real well. And we flex most with staff better than anybody else. Okay. Because, again, if we have to work nights, we've got to work nights to get this, what we have to get done done. Yeah. It's hard for a contractor to bid the job, not knowing how many off hours they've got to have. Yeah. Because well, they only need to be a little bit. This past weekend, you had a transformer that went sideways, and you guys spent the night working yes. on that. Yes. It's ugly. Yeah, <laughs> lovely is right. Yeah, so um, anyhow, what are we, what are you, huh? There's activity outside too. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, there's stuff going on outside. There's so. outside stuff going on too. We're getting new roofs put on. Uh, during this project, the uh, helipad came off. It's about, about the south wing. Well, it came off on purpose, by it the come, way. It came off on purpose, it's, it's correct. <laughs> They've okay. been talked for years about to potentially taking the helipad down. <laughs> Uh, we kept it as a secondary pad. It was not needed for the organization. We just kept it as a secondary pad. The roof above us uh, is the, above us is, is the roof. Uh, there's no other level of the floor above us. And the roof up there, the roofing system itself has been talked about being replaced on capital budget for about the last three years. We've been just delaying and patching because we didn't know what really was <coughs> going to happen with the south wing. Uh, the most behavioral health was, was earmarked to come into here. That kind of made the decision that you're not going to do anything major with yeah. the south wing. The helipad come down, and the reason we had the discussion of the helipad coming off. By the way, it's just so the south wings. Get, for those of you who are ge geographically challenged, it's the it's the side where the car ran through the front the, the front part of it a year or so ago. That's correct. That's the south wing. That's the south wing. That's where the lobby and the main lobby is at too of the hospital. Right. So the, the, one of the reasons why we talked about taking the helipad down, we were, we were some concerned about the patient base that's, in this, that's going to be housing in, in this wing, that's going to be staying here. Uh, the, the lights, the flashing lights, the, the noise that the helicopter generates when it, when it comes in or takes off, the rattling of the windows, all those things that, that, that shake up their internal environment yeah. here uh, were concerned. So we thought uh, now's the okay. perfect time to, yeah. to remove it and re-roof the building okay. at the same time. So it's, Yeah, because those, those helicopters are pretty noisy. Uh, if anyone's been around the hospital when those come on in, that's not a, not a little yeah. thing in terms of, of noise production. Right. Yeah, okay, good. You know, you know, dollars and cents, how much is this project going to cost? This project's uh, earmarked to be right around, let me put that down. I don't <laughs> do so many stuff anymore, I don't remember every little dime. Um, so right now we're budgeted for our food budget is 3.2 million. 3.2, 3.2 with several zeros after that. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. this is a this is a complicated project with a lot of moving pieces and a lot of new systems going in. Yeah. All, all the uh, heating and ventilation systems uh, that serve this area have been changed and are new. Okay. Um, yeah. So Bob, what's, what would you, what's your favorite project that you've ever done here? I know that's pinning you way down on that, but what would you say it is? My favorite project is the re HR relocation project. It is definitely not the so most... So HR is human resources. Yep. So we, we, we had to relocate the HR department from the hospital. We moved it to the main clinic. And the reason why we did... Um, <clears throat> the reason why we moved that was because the pharmacy was getting expanded and uh, infrastructure changes at the east end of the, of the hospital. HR had a budget of right around $264,000. So definitely not our largest project. Yeah. But there was time constraints of three months. Oh, yeah. We needed yeah, to move yeah. there within three months. We had to get it done. Yeah. So we pulled the team together. Tim and I did. We t I talked about what could be done to shorten the timeline. If we had to hire out more outside help, job out more things than we typically would. The team said, no, they got this. They, they said, let's quit talking about it. Let's go to work. So they went about over there. They took a project that was estimated to be done in five months completed it on time in that three months. Nice. They worked, they flexed their hours as they needed to. They're again, you know, I'm fortunate to work with a bunch of uh, highly skilled, dri very driven professional staff. These guys are driven, they're up for a challenge, which is why when they, this project was presented to us, yeah. 
they were all for it. They 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 want to build. Yeah. And they want to do the things that they think that benefit the community. They sure do. Which is save money. Yeah. As much as they can. Yeah, that's that's nice. <laughs> that is nice. They do. Your team does really good work. They do excellent. I'm, work. I'm really glad we had a chance to chat with Bob today about what's going on here, uh, this behavioral health unit. I'm going to talk a little bit. We're going to go to a, a kind of a, another spot, and we're going to talk a little bit about what the behavioral health unit brings to the community, and a few other, and some COVID related things as well. Anything else that I didn't ask you, Bob, that you think would be helpful for the folks who are watching to know? No, I think you, 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 you've answered everything I got. Okay, all right. Hey, thanks a lot, Bob. Thank you. Maybe we'll do this again sometime when this place is looking better. That'd be Not great. better, I should say, but when it's that'd looking closer, closer to finish. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank all you. right. Okay, so follow me. We're going to go this way. Okay, I'm going to try to walk slowly or slower. <laughs> Let's see here if we can get this over top of this thing here. Okay. Oh, that's another way to do it. Okay. All right. Man, I got so sweaty. You guys doing can that. break I whenever you, you want. I, um, they have a fan. You guys can break whenever you want. Um, yeah. I wanted just they're to still, talk about still broadcasting, but we can uh, COVID related things and I think we're gonna get a little bit more light here. Are we okay light wise? Okay. So I just wanted to highlight a few COVID related things. <laughs> and, and by the way, this behavioral health unit, we'll probably have the folks who are gonna be staffing it on here at some point in time before we actually go live and have it. But I just wanted to highlight that um, you know, behavioral health, mental health is definitely a community need. Um, it's not uncommon for patients to come to our hospital, to the emergency department, and then, oops, and then they need to, ooh, ooh. excuse me, and then they need to go, um, then they need to go um, out of the community for behavioral health services, for inpatient behavioral health services. So the fact that we're going to have that here in the community is, is going to be really helpful for those patients, for the families. Um, I'm really excited about it. Anyhow, I want to transition to COVID here for a moment or two. So we've had a, definitely an uptick in cases here at the hospital. In the uh, past um, two weeks, we've had about 26% of our positive cases here at the hospital. Now, granted, we're doing more testing than we were doing early on, but 26% 20, of the cases we've had, we've had in the last two weeks here at the hospital. Our positivity rate at the hospital is around 12% lately. Um, so it's, it's not just that we're doing more tests, it's that where more people are positive. And the health department, they're running about 20% of their cases have been in the last two weeks. Uh, and they're running, I hear, about 10.5% for their positive test results. Just to give you some a frame of reference, the state average yesterday was 3.5% uh, over the past week. So definitely trending higher here. Uh, hospital cases, we continue to have them and they're up some. So we've had more patients that are hospitalized with COVID. So it's not that we're not managing it and taking care of that and take, taking care of those patients, uh, but definitely obviously the pandemic continues to go on. And if anything, uh, it appears that it's, you know, at this moment stronger now than it, ha than it was a few months ago. So uh, I, as always, I encourage everyone just to kind of do all the smart stuff uh, that you can, wear masks, distance, and that'll help you out a lot. I don't think it's anything right now where we feel like if folks will do that, um, you know, you're going to be able to stay reasonably safe uh, as you go about most of the things that you do in the day. Uh, I, I did have a get a chance to watch a, a webinar that the American Medical Association did in conjunction with the uh, FDA um, yesterday, and they were talking about the vaccine approval process. And I just wanted to kind of share a few things that they mentioned at that. Uh, session. So it's pretty likely that we'll have a vaccine by the end of the year. It's really, really unlikely that we'll have a vaccine by election day. Uh, they're trying to be very transparent about this process. So I think as these companies submit data that are generating these vaccines, we're going to start seeing that information become public so, pe the, so the public can be more aware and feel more comfortable with the vaccine uh, approval process. Uh, the FDA is aware that the way it's kind of gone down so far has made the public a little skittish about it, understandably. So I think they're going to try to do some, um, 
they're going to try to do some rec service recovery, if you will, to kind of better educate and, and be more transparent about that process. Uh, just so you get some sense of how many patients are doing this, for a couple companies, for Pfizer, they, Pfizer, they have 40,000 patients in their trial, and another company called Moderna has 30,000 patients in their trial. So it, it's a, these vaccines will have quite a few people that have taken them before they go live to the public. And the final point that he gave that I thought was interesting that for these vaccines to be really effective and get herd immunity, about they'd have to be about 70% effective and be given to about 70% of the population. So quite a task to get that all done. So even if the, the vaccines are available, let's say in late December, I think it's, it's this is me, this isn't the FDA. I think you're talking, um, I don't know, summer before you can get all the, the vaccines ramped up and distributed and given to all the people that need them. So yeah, that's kind of where we're at with that. And I, I would, uh, I, I read an article in, a, in a, one of the trade journals that I get that I thought was kind of humorous and I thought I would share it with you. And so everybody's having to kind of uh, flex to the pandemic and try to make things work as best they can. Uh, what this uh, article said was, um, it was not an article, just kind of quick blurb, was there's a nudist resort in Connecticut and as a result of the pandemic, they've canceled skeet shooting. Everyone has to wear masks. You can't, you got, everything else is okay, but you got to wear a mask. Uh, they, and, and I don't even want to say this, but um, they, they sanitize the shuffleboard discs between plays. So keep that in mind for yourself uh, as you think about this upcoming week. I thought that was pretty funny. Anyhow, thanks for, uh, for listening. Next week we're going to have, oh, I, I hear we may have something else we need to chat about here. Um, yeah, yeah, we did that part. So next week, I'm pretty sure we're going to have some folks from our lab to talk a little bit about where we're at with the testing process and what kind of tests we have and what kind of tests we maybe will be having in the future here at the hospital. So let's see what else Dana has for me. Um, oh, and then someone was asking about the thoughts and the drugs they gave the president. Yeah, so I saw that they gave him like eight different medicines some of them are just some of them were vitamins even but uh yeah i mean one of the drugs this uh one by regeneron which is a viral uh cocktail if you will antiviral cocktail um they're just asking now for fda approval for emergency use so it was experimental and he got remdesivir and he got some dexamethasone i i guess i would say that the uh, Regeneron one, you know, presidents tend to get the kitchen sink. And I think he got, he got the kitchen sink because you and I wouldn't show up to the hospital and get that right now. The remdesivir, um, I, I would say that probably most folks would say he maybe got a little bit earlier than most folks. And that dexamethasone, which is a steroid, we don't typically give that to folks until they're like in the ICU. Um, but I'm guessing his doctors, and he's a patient, so between his doctors and himself, they were like, let's just, let's just do everything we can think of to see if that'll get my viral load down and make me feel better. So that's, that's my hunch of how that all played out with uh, President Trump. Um, glad he's feeling better. Glad for any patient that has whatever treatment they get and they feel better, that's for sure. And the good news of this is that, yeah, we have people that, they get really sick and stay sick and have long-term repercussions of this. And we have people that, that, of course, pass away from this. But the vast majority of folks do recover, um, and they are able to go about their business after they're, they're, they're done with this. So um, I'm grateful for that, that we're still talking a, a small percentage of folks who, who pass away or get really, really sick. And I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you for everybody taking the time to, list, to, to watch this and look forward to chatting with you again next week. And next week we'll do more of our, I think we'll do more of our usual uh, where we, I'll have my face mask off and we'll have kind of split screens and be able to talk to our lab folks. So until then, have a great week. Thank you.